knowledge value neutral if we produce value neutral knowledge what is going to happen to mankind what is going to happen to society kya hoga agar ilm jo hai usme اخلاق کو تربیت نہیں دی جاتی ہے اخلاق کے سدھارنے کی بات نہیں ہوتی تو وہ انسانیت کے لیے کیا کرے گا دین یو ہیئر دا اسٹوریز آف کلون یو ہیئر دا اسٹوریز آف اے آئی یو ہیئر دا اسٹوریز آف جینیٹکس یو ہیئر دا اسٹوریز آف جی این اے یو ہیئر دا اسٹوری وچ ایونچولی ڈینائز دا نالج آف اللہ اگر آپ ایک ہال کو نہیں سنبھال سکتے تو اس ملک کی سائنس کو کیسے سنبھالیں گے سو یہ بیسک کوشچن از از نالج وین یو نیوٹرل اور ناٹ اینڈ اف یو سی نالج از وین یو نیوٹرل دین واٹس آر ایف نالج آر یو پروڈیوسنگ the result of this thinking was when they gave this resolution of 1945 human rights the un passed the revolution there were only five conquerors who gave this new system to the universe five conquerors they sat together and they gave all the system they redistributed the boundaries they redistributed the the, the 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 sovereignty of the people uh, and they also gave the ordinance the human rights declaration usme aap fortify ke raha there was no mention of morality two things were deleted morality and sovereignty both then they realized after some years that this human rights system that they are wanting to introduce is not going to work without the moral support and without the recognizing the sovereignty of independent countries so this is now what is hap- what is happening in in our context we started with a passion no pakistan is the product of a passion and the instead of enriching that passion adding more strength to it with our educational system we started revising that passion and the result is some kind of intellectual revisionism that has crept into our educational system here and there intellectual instead of intellectual revival revivalism some kind of a revisionism has taken place the university had to have to guard it now here at this point i want to make it very clear and i i may be rather unconventional i don't mind that if your educational system becomes value neutral and it does not recognize the passion which created pakistan pakistan will not stay together as, as one country because we by all political standards we all are four nations there is no doubt about it what is binding us together what is that glue which is keeping us together and that is the islamic bondage If this bondage is not there, then there is no harm in being independent. So, if the universities do not give their support, these, then I, it gives me an avenue for another thought that I want to do. Now you have 164 universities in the world. 
in the country, 164. And those universities, according to the survey of the HEC in 1914-15, have a strength of 12 lakhs 98,600 people, students. This is the total population of all the, the universities of Pakistan, 164. Now it is so small. It is so small. You know, it's, it is 9.9% rate of participation 9.9 percent now it may have gone up to 2 2 percent more 11 percent the rate of the rate of participation at the universal level you can see united states right in the top one Second, UK. Second is, is UK. Third is Germany. The rate of participation ke population ka kaun sa is sa? Higher education tak pounchta hai. Third is Germany. Fourth is Australia. Fifth, Canada. Sixth, France. Seventh, the Netherlands. Eighth, China. Ninth, South Korea. Ten is ninth is no no ninth is Spain and then South Spain and Korea. We are at number fifty. And India is, is number 24. So, we have to do it. We have to do it. We have to do it. We to We to no, we are 50 in the list, they are 24. But it's not much difference, I tell you. There's not much difference. So, and it gives me the opportunity to introduce another theme in this conversation. Okay, you have the spread and the proliferation of universities on the one side. But how do you explain the lack of literacy down below? The basic problem in Pakistan is the power structure. Write it down. This is the basic problem. If the power structure remains the same, nothing is going to change. There would be incremental changes. 5% is not 3% Now, what are you spending on your higher education? You are spending, write it down, 0. Point, 0. 0.25. One, it is one. Fourth of one percent. Eight percent will be GDP ka zero point two five of GDP you are spending on education. Samandar se mere pyaase ko shabna. Samandar se mere प्यासे को शब्दम बखेली है ये रज़ाकी नहीं है। This is what you are doing. A 
at the time of uh, this is the condition today at the time when the ai commission started it was even less it was 0.09 at that time years ago the allocation for higher education was 0.09 why is it so? We have been hearing this. Why is it so? Now again I use your terminology. We have been going on in a vicious circle. Every change is the repetition. We have been, we introduce new ideas, new words. And if I write it down, it might help you somewhere. We have been modernizing our poverty. We have been modernizing our poverty with new names. And this vicious circle has been going on. Unless the centripetal force is weakened, the cycle will never be broken. Unless the centrifugal force works a little harder and the centripetal force is broken, is weakened, the cycle will never change. And how do you break the central peakal, central peakal force with the external in intervention. Now external in intervention can be in two forms. One is the revolutionary intervention, use of force. And the other is reform. Now revolutions are no more feasible. Revolutions have failed. The history of the last 200 years shows that revolutions have failed. And the greatest example of this is Russia on one side, China on the other. In Russia, the revolution failed and the last ruler of the Soviet Union, Gorbachev, had to say, it is on record, the state became so expensive that it had to fail. State became so expensive, it had to fail. The Chinese were much wiser than the Russians. Din Piaoling, who was the uh, one of the wisest leaders, he realized this, that this racket is not going to succeed. So he started reform gradually without making it obvious. And that reform today is known as market socialism. It's known as today market socialism. It's a combination market and socialism and that's why they have become a big threat to the Americans. The Americans are trying very hard, there's no doubt about it, that the Americans are far ahead of every nation in basic sciences. In basic sciences, they are far ahead. But the application of knowledge as the greatest virtue of the Chinese people. So universities have to be thoughtful about this. What sort of people are you producing? Reform people or revolutionary? Now remember, the use of this word, revolution, is very unacademic these days, particularly. 
Revolutions have failed. And the only sustainable change is the change of reformation, Islahat. Or Islahat kaan se shuru hoti hai? You have to ensure as the soul maker, you are the soul energizer of the nation. You energize the souls. You have to make sure that the people you send out are reformed. Everything will change. Otherwise, the thing will remain the same. And a time might come when the society collapses. Because when a society lacks the minimum of moral content which is necessary to keep it alive, it collapses. The university has to see like this. Now whether the power structure, which is the basic problem of this country, will change with the introduction of the universities, proliferation of universities, or with the improvement at the elementary level. I frankly speaking, I don't like this word higher education. You know, it sounds like a class voice. Education is indivisible. Whether it is higher or it is lower, it is indivisible. And if you divide it into higher and lower, you are introducing the class voice. And you see the legislation of higher education. I have spoken on this in a seminar in Nathagali some time ago. I read this legislation, the ordinance of the university, universities, higher education, I read it over and over. He said, in the first instance, it's not a piece of finely drafted legislation. It's not a good drafting. And if you see the functions, you know, they have covered all the alphabets from A to Z and some of the alphabets have been repeated. Z, Z, Y, Y, twice, you know. And there's a confusion between functions and powers. If you read it again, you see. So, the name higher education, see, call it a, a Education, if you have to have to a commission, independent commission, which is perfectly all right, if you have, call it Education Commission of Pakistan, it gives a much bigger horizon. You know. On the other side, the elementary, the other part, elementary is all okay. I have more quarrel with the name, with the nomenclature of elementary because it deals with elements. But remember, education cannot be broken into elements. It has to integrate. And now the world trend in the universities and elsewhere is to integrate knowledge. It has to integrate. You see, not to disintegrate. Because it's not a joke, it's not a joke. He, he specialized in rose when he came back from America or United Kingdom. He is specialized in, no, in, in nose. What the hell do you mean? Nose? Which nostril? <laughs> nose kya hota hai? Kis ka? Right or left? Which nostril in which he is? Because the knowledge was proliferating. It was disintegrating and now it has become unmanageable. Now they think 
that the knowledge should be integrated once again. So, universities have to do it. Power structure changes, listen to me carefully. मैं कुछ हाजिर लगाने के लिए नहीं आया पावर स्ट्रक्चर चेंजेस फ्रॉम द बॉटम एलिमेंट्री एजुकेशन पावर स्ट्रक्चर डज नॉट चेंज विद हायर एजुकेशन हायर एजुकेशन प्रोड्यूस लीडर्स नॉट द फॉलोअर्स You have to see whether you have been able to produce those leaders, people who are qualified. Somebody thought of BA degree as a qualification for the membership of the National Assembly, and this was in force. The result was the degrees were sold, degrees were created. In one case, which relates to law. University, perhaps, if I remember correctly, somebody you know qualified BA in the morning and he qualified MA in the evening, <laughs> the same day. So, I, you know, it has not really improved because what you teach is different. The normative content normative i am using the word in a disguised manner normative content means ideological content in the ideological content taught at the elementary level is is of elementary level is essential in the universities the same elements have to be united together into the form of a holistic whole that is not taking place the holistic whole and the result is the kind of chaos that you see in the, in the, in the country samjhara so this is how i see the university is being relevant to the future of pakistan again we come back to another point okay how to break i want to make it more specific how to break the central peaked force the only way either the revolution which we have i i have abandoned in the reform now the form again becomes rather confused the only force which can break this centripetal force which has kept you moving in a vicious circle like this is ideological ideology otherwise without ideology every country has its own character i am talking of pakistan without it will be you know a some kind of animal form with excellent fodder and everything but with no sense of direction and then university is being the factories of knowledge we have to make sure that knowledge carries some meaning it's not very very neutral knowledge is the search of truth the human journey started with knowledge when sayyid na adam came down to this earth he came with knowledge you must talk to the names and the interpreters mufassir in said his names were not the specific names but the name of the families and the orders the figures in terms of biology you know 
not the specific names. He came with this knowledge. Because he had to deal with this universe. Now, knowledge and truth should go together. I would like you to register this. Knowledge and truth should go together. Again, there has been a controversy in the West. Truth is indivisible. Truth is indivisible. There could be different domains, different colors, but truth remains truth. It is indivisible. I saw a small book by uh, Huggings. What are those names of that book? Anyway, a small book which is available and it should be uh, read by in which he describes truths. Uh, Julian Hagging, Julian Begging, Julian J U L I A N, Julian Beggins, B A double G I N S, Beg, Begin. B A double G I N I Begani Julian Begani small book The History of Truth and he categorizes he gives a category of truth I will read I will read those out you can go on writing the eternal truths then authoritative truths Esoteric truths, Hofia. Esoteric means Hofia. There are certain truths which are, you know, truths, but they are kept hidden. Reason truths, reason truths. Then empirical truths. Then creative truths. Then relative truths, relative truths, then powerful truths, and then moral truths, and finally holistic truths. In a small book, it's well written, very interesting. It is basically meant for the teachers for the reformers. So knowledge is a search of truth, but truth is indivisible. My contact with your subject came in 1962. I was a student in BA honors and one of my subjects was, I would just tell you the story and then finish for question and answers. One of my subjects was philosophy. Or philosophy may there are many schools which we were supposed to read. And one of those schools was relativism, theory of relativity. Theory of relativities. I had a friend, a very close friend of mine who belonged to our village. He was a student of MSc living in hostel number one. So I asked him, hey, theory of relativity, but I want to read about this in the original text so that it becomes very clear. Philosophic application all hai or he hai kya cheez? So he said, all right, he gave me a book. Check, one patri was called Jam, Jam sahab ke kitab thi, ye kya naam tha? Jam, Jam, is tarah kuch naam tha. I'm forgetting. What do you got here? The theory of relativity, you read it. For me, I said, this is how our students were there. They 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 were there. They
I read it, the equation ran into pages and pages. Pages and eventually in the end it was E is equal to MC square. Eventually. So I'm interested in this part. This part is you spend the whole life on this and worked out this equation. This was my first contact with your, your subject as a discipline. Theory of relativity. Everything is relative. It shook the, the followers of faith because faith is not relative. It is eternal. But the application of relativity, the poetic application of relativity was remarkable. It was something really readable. And I finish this with a, with a line which describes relativity poetically. Sir. Something good for you may not be good for me. Something bad for me may not be bad for you. Something. And it's, the poet says, it's called kind of relativity in poetry. He said, Tumare zulf ko ponchi. Tumare zulf ko ponchi to husn kya lai. Tumare zulf ko ponchi to husn kya lai. Wo tirigi, tirigi andere ko kete hai. Tarihi tarihi ko kete hai. Wo tirigi jo mere namaye seyame hai. वो तीरगी जो मेरे नामाय इस्याम में है तुम्हारे इस दुर्ग को पहुंची तो वो सुन गया भाई तो वे स्टॉप हियर आई कैन गो ऑन एंड ऑन बिकॉज़ इट्स फॉर मी इट्स अ ग्रेट टेम्पटेशन टू स्पीक टू लर्निंग ऑडियंस लाइक योर्स बट वेल आई एम क्वाइट फैमिलियर विद योर threshold of tolerance. If the classroom culture is the same, it's not more than 35 minutes, 40 minutes. But I am very ambitious, an audience like this. I have not been able to write. I'm sorry I took so long and it might have uh, created some kind of heaviness of mind in you. But it was unavoidable. It was all the product of sincerity. Yeah. Uh, whenever I came to the mic, I make a lot of things and thinkings in my heart that I will thank the audience, I will thank the honorable guest, I will thank the guest speaker. And the significance of the speaker is that we started thinking about it me and the Honorable Secretary of uh, Farooq Shah last year. And we were fortunate today to have this great speaker. During the speech, uh, a couplet of Ajmal Khatak came to my mind. Acer said,